welcome to a new segment of Darshan, The Morning Blend, which is going to bring you a new spin on current events. I'm Rohan. I'm Ami. And we're both first generation Indian Americans, and we wanted to bring you that perspective on today's topics, culture, politics, everything you can think of that you need to know as first generation Indian Americans. Right. Today we have a surprising addition to a top 10 Forbes list, as well as um, a Desi website which is not trying to get you married. Surprising. Our first topic is a well-known comedian, Russell Peters. You know, well-known here by us, first generation. That's true. Basically, Russell Peters is a comedian from Canada. Okay. Um, he's been popular in the United States for many years now. Uh, he broke into a top 10 Forbes list in terms of earnings. He earns $10 okay. million dollars a year now. What interests me, though, is the fact that I think Russell Peters abuses Indian stereotypes to get ahead. When you make Indian jokes, you make it to your uncle, your aunt, at a wedding, your dad, your mom, at home. You're never going to make an Indian joke. How often do you just walk into a room with your friends, with, with, with your friends that are white or whatever they are, and just make Indian jokes? You do if you're using an accent. How many people are going to find it funny, you know, in your household if you try and use an accent or That's tell the a only joke? time my parents think I'm funny. Really? Because I feel that my parents would think that, you know, you're just making fun of us. Russell Peters uses the worst Indian stereotypes, and the worst part is he's so popular in America. I think he's funny because I'm Indian, but it's awful that he's using like, you know, Indian, we're all smelly, we're all hairy, we, we all beat our kids, blah, blah, blah. He's just abusing those stereotypes to get ahead. I think a lot of us can relate to those kinds of things. Minus the beating part. Yeah. Moving on to the next topic, we have the All South Asian Spelling Bee. This isn't what you're used to seeing on ESPN and different things like that. Okay. This is the All South Asian Spelling Bee where at least one parent or grandparent of the speller must be of South Asian descent. Okay, so it's meant for us first generation. Exactly. My question is, now we have our own spelling bee, is it because Indian parents push their kids and they drive them as hard as they can to be good spellers, or are we just good at spelling? If I asked you to spell a word right now, you know, I don't think it would be spelled correctly. So I think okay. that these parents are pushing their kids. I think that Indians are innately good spellers, we're hard workers, the parents raise their kids, they put them in different learning centers early on, they give them okay. third grade books in first grade, um, they're constantly being pushed and that's just part of our culture and that's why we're just whooping up on all these other kids in every region of the country. You just said we're hard workers, well you can work hard to achieve this kind of goal. Your parents can sit with you, you can work hard, you can learn roots, you can learn how to spell. Then how come once Indian kids have come into prominence, the baby boomers kids have started to being raised in America, in the last 10 years, 6 out of the last 10 have been Indians. Can you explain that? Because these um, people who have you know, moved here from India, they're trying to get their kids who are first generation to really shine in this country. How are you going to do it other than winning some kind of academic? I guess <laughs> so, but all kinds, Koreans, Germans, French people, all, their, all these immigrants' okay. kids are all pushing, they're all in the spelling bee and they're all trying as hard as they can and look who's rising to the top. Well, moving on, next Fine. topic. Edison, New Jersey. Our favorite town. Here we have, you know, administrators trying to implement a Hindi program in high schools. Here's the problem. They're spending $90,000 on okay. a trip to India that includes a 12-day sightseeing trip to learn from the Indians how to teach Hindi in America. I think this is a complete abomination of taxpayer dollars and just an abuse of the Indian community. I disagree. You know, $90,000 may be a bit steep, but the principle of the matter I believe in. We need to bring Hindi language into these schools. We are bringing Hindi language into the schools. It's in Dallas County, Austin County. I know in Fairfax County they've started to administer tests uh, for Hindi. Okay. I know that I, at William & Mary, a college down south, uh, they were starting to learn Hindi there. And they're not taking $90,000 trips to India full of trips to the Taj Mahal and how to learn Hindi. They're teaching Chinese and Latin in Edison, New Jersey as well. They're not going to China. They're not going to Italy. They're abusing the taxpayer dollars. And I think this is wrong. I think the Indians need to realize that we are an immigrant population. Right. We're 0.8 percent in the country. We're not 17 percent. And we need to act like that. We need to sometimes realize that we have a place and we need to accommodate to the rest of the country, especially New Jersey. Well, still, we're going to have these Hindi programs. What if they can expand? You know, these administrators can go to conferences, build relationships. They can expand this Hindi program to go across the U.S. All right, maybe, maybe not. Let's go on to our next topic. Okay. Rick Kosla started the Masala magazine. Everyone's heard about it. You just heard about it on In Conversation. Here's my question. Are we going to read this magazine? No. Are you? Of course I'm going to read this magazine. Why wouldn't you? Well, are you going to read the Bollywood gossip in here? I No. No. Are you going to read about the college tips? Probably not, but I'm going to read You're about the... College. I'm going to read about the main thrust of the magazine, which is what sells it off the shelves. The connections that the magazine will give you, the information about South Asian successful businessmen and women in every professional field in the D.C. metropolitan area. 
Can't you get that from people in your family who've pursued careers just like this? Mm, maybe, but your scope is limited. How else are you going to know about all the successful, the real, the top down? You're going to be looking at the forest, not the trees. You have to see the real thrust, and that's what Masala is going to give you. Okay, well, I was reading his Twitter. He seems like a little bit of a fob. Is he going to have all these connections? Clearly, he does have the connections. By the way, I read his Twitter too, and he's rolling around in an Escalade. So right. that's pretty impressive. Also, he has the Indian ambassador. Uh, coming to his kickoff party for the okay. magazine. I mean, I hadn't heard of this guy. I don't know about you. He came Not out of before. nowhere. He's from out of Punjab. He's right. clearly Indian and American. He's the perfect blend um, to reach out to us and want to make me make me want to read this magazine. What are we going to get from this magazine? We're going to get a product that gives us South Asians that are successful. That know what? How else are people going to find out about it? Word of mouth isn't the way that this community is going to keep getting ahead. We need to know about each other all the time and Masala is going to provide that. Okay, who says people aren't going to just pick up the magazine, read it and then put it back on the shelf? That's what they can do with any magazine. The point is that we're Indians and we care. Bottom line, I'm not going to read this magazine, so you're all on right. your own. All right. Finally, we have mylifeisdesi.com. It's kind of like My Life is Average, which is another blogging site. What's interesting is this website, you just post like 140 character sort of quick stories and it shows right. a disconnect between your parents and you. I know, so basically all these are just, you know, funny ways to make fun of your parents or, you know, talk about awkward situations. Exactly. It just shows the disconnect and we're trying to bridge that gap with this segment. Uh, here's a funny one. Today my mother is preparing ten different dishes for lunch. There's only one guest coming over. My life is Daisy. Today I was reading some MLID, My Life is Daisy posts to my parents. They just stared at me and said, so what's wrong with that? My life is Daisy. Today, my mother broke a plastic spoon in half just so it would fit in a sugar container. My life is Daisy. My dad was coming to pick me up at 7, and he said he was 5 minutes away. He ended up coming at 8.30. My life is Daisy. Today, I couldn't sleep because the cheap zoom-in effects from the Indian soap opera kept waking me up. My life is Daisy. And we think that yours is, too. Thanks for watching the show. See you next time.